What am I, of all people, doing with these things, I hear you wondering? Aren't they too fussy and expensive, too precious for the wired gourmet? Well, admittedly, they belong to the thick haze of coffee pseudoscience fogging up the internet these days, and they do radiate unfortunate airs of stylish connoisseurship. But on the other hand, I'm planning to increase the frequency of grinder reviews here, and it will be good if I can offer some objective measurements when I compare one machine to another. A tool like this should help me to illustrate differences. So is this gadget going to help me to help you? Or have I been made a fool by the kind of people selling shrimp scissors and pasta rakes? Only one way to find out. Let's put her to the test, shall we? Oh. My. God. It's like a miracle. These inserts might have precise openings, but the whole business here relies on very imprecise mechanical input. You've got to shake a specific number of times in a consistent manner with each of your samples because the particles will keep finding their way through the screens pretty much forever. I shook this one for a good 30 seconds, plenty of time for every blessed undersized particle to fall through. But it's just never enough. So all you can do is try to apply consistent G-forces, always with the same number of shakes. Small particles cling to the undersides of the screens, so you need to tap sharply with a pencil or something. The system functions best with small doses, but there's enough static cling for the leftovers to be significant when you test less than around 20 grams. This kit is extremely sensitive to operator influence. An unscrupulous reviewer could use it to support whatever phony claim they want to make. Now let's look at the build quality. The lid is cupped and doesn't fit snugly. It threatens to make a mess every time you shake it. The top edges of the compartments are unfinished. They're rough and abrasive and unpleasant to handle. The rack doesn't hold the inserts particularly well. What do they expect me to do? Handle them with tweezers? Another problem with the rack is this stylish triangular shape. It's hard to get a grip, and you instinctively want to place one or two fingers underneath to support it. This set cost me 180 euros. At these prices, this kind of slack is inexcusable. Elevating my coffee experience indeed. Elevating my blood pressure is more like it. So, if it's not really a professional gizmo, what about using it at home as a means of refining your grind? Yeah, I don't think so. Even if it were well-designed and well-made, I would never recommend sieving your coffee routinely to exclude certain fractions, hoping to perfect your grind. First, because that wastes coffee, which is a sin. Second, because it's time-consuming and messy. And third, because differences in grinding methods and bird geometry add variety and interest. Seeking to purify each of your flavor profiles in pursuit of some theoretical ideal strikes me as kind of unhealthy. If there were a coffee grinder that could do that, restrict particle sizes to a narrow, median range, like a roller mill, it would fly off the shelves because it's what everyone thinks they want. But after a tsunami of initial enthusiasm, most of those machines would end up in the attic because owners would quickly grow tired of all that purity. Conventional grinders have character. They add character. And don't forget, the word median shares the same Latin root as the word mediocre. Think of this analogy. In music, you have a dominant tone and its harmonics. If you remove the overtones, you get something pure, you know, like this.
pure monotony, I'd call it. As for me, I prefer something a little dirtier. For that audio sample, I'm grateful to Adrian, a fine musician and teacher who hosts the YouTube channel Anyone Can Play Guitar. Adrian knows his business and he's good company, just like your favorite food and coffee guy. Check out the link in the description. So yes, I disapprove of trying to perfect your grind at home, which seems to be one of Kruv's main selling points. And I don't trust this kit to make objective measurements up to Wired Gourmet standards in a professional context. At a glance, it appears clean, uncomplicated, and blonde, and therefore sexy in the Los Angeles manner. On close inspection, you'll see some ragged-looking details, also in the Los Angeles manner. And I don't see any real use for it besides looking good from a distance. So that's 180 euros down the drain. I could have bought a nice hand grinder to critique for you instead of this ridiculous prop. And yes, looking at it on my kitchen shelf is kind of embarrassing. Well, that's about all for today. I will review the new Eureka single dose grinder as soon as it's available, and I'll benchmark it head to head against the Eureka Specialita and the Niche Zero. I expect to publish that video in October or early November of 2021, so keep in touch. Cheers! <laughs>